So thanks very much, uh, Kevin and, and the wider HDR Midlands team, just to give everybody a bit of an update on Federated Analytics. Um, I'm appreciating that it's probably quite a broad audience. So what I'm trying to do is give you an overview uh, and point you to in uh, the direction of extra resources where you can find out more information. And please follow up with myself or, or Tim, actually, Tim Beck, that's on the call, uh, for more information. Um, and so I'm going to give you the overview, give you uh, a few of the areas that we're looking at, um, and then hopefully uh, that will drive some questions. So one of the roles I have is to co-lead the Federated Analytics Programme within Health Data Research UK uh, with Carol Goble from Manchester. Um, and really, uh, one of the things that we need to understand first, actually, is secure data environments. So there was a couple of people on the call that uh, I think we've got both East and West Midlands rep centres from uh, the secure data environments in the region. Um, but really, uh, if you haven't come across these, uh, and if you haven't, they can also be referred to as trusted research environments. These are um, areas where they hold the data, um, but you don't get to be able to take the data out. So this is an environment where the data is put into. You can go into there to analyze the data in a kind of a virtual sense. You log into this environment, you can get access to the data that way. But when you want to pull out results, somebody checks that the results are allowed to move. This is particularly the case for unconsented data. So if you've been working on data sets where you've been collecting a part of a consented cohort, you may not have come across TREs or secure data environments in the past. But really, um, there is technology behind it. But a lot of this is actually a governance framework in which to allow access to the unconsented and live population level data sets. Uh, I put a QR code. Uh, at the bottom of the screen as well. So that will take you through to the NHS England details on the secure data environments call as well, um, or, and details on that. So if you want to find out more about the NHS England secure data environments work, you can use that QR code at the bottom. Um, but then also this uses something called the five safes framework, which is something else that I'll touch on as well. But the key thing here is that the base assumption is that you would log into each one of these trusted research environments, do your analysis within that environment, and then only pull out the results. Of course, the question then comes, well, what do you do if you want to analyze data that currently sits in more than one TRE or SDE? And that's where federation can come in. So the five SAFEs framework, um, th this is what it stands for. So safe data, projects, people, settings, and outputs. Uh, this is something that's been around uh, for quite some time uh, in terms of a concept, but really has started to come into mainstream use, uh, sorry, particularly driven by Health Data Research UK uh, and the work of the Data Alliance uh, as well. So this is really about understanding how do we give access to researchers in a way that is controlled, um, and the most important thing about these concept is that they're interlocking. Um, so it's a safe person in the context of a safe project for the safe data in relation to a safe setting, and then also the safe outputs for that project. So it's not that you can just take one on its own. These are five concepts which interlink uh, and come together as a group. So a safe person on one project might not be considered a safe person on a separate project or on different types of data. There's more information again, I've got the QR code if you wanna go and find out more about the five safes if you've not heard about that before, but this is one of the key governance uh, areas that are utilized across secure data environments and trusted research environments, um, and is gonna be part of the uh, NHS England uh, rollout of the secure data environment program as well. So if you're not aware of this, uh, that's something that's important to look at. And then finally, the other kind of concept that we have uh, floating around is kind of FAIR. Um, if you haven't heard of FAIR, here's the definitions of what it is. So findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Again, a QR code to find out more information about it. Um, and really, this is about uh, how we can get the reuse of data. So obviously, to reuse something, you first need to be able to find it. Uh, you need to be able to understand how to access it. And accessible shouldn't be or shouldn't be confused with just being open. Uh, there, there, there may well be uh, methods and mechanisms you have to go through in order to get access to the data. And one of those would be the five safe framework. So that could be a mechanism to get access. Interoperable is then around uh, having metadata and being able to describe the information that you have. And then obviously reusable is the fact that 
data that has been used once can then be reused multiple times uh, by different people. So you've got these different concepts here. You've got secure data environments, which are trying to provide access to data, but in a very secured, controlled way in which you can't move the data out of that environment. The data stays where it is. You go and visit the data. You have the five safes, which are around trying to provide a, a, a framework in which people can access data. And then you've got FAIR, uh, which has come from the desire to enable more people to access and reuse data. Now, not all of this is instantly and automatically fully aligned in a sense of there are some aspects of FAIR that are actually very hard to do in the context of a secure data environment or a TRE, and in particular also with the five safe. So this is a really interesting space when you've got these different frameworks some designed to make data accessible and reusable, others designed to provide a governance wrapper uh, to make sure that somebody's safe, and others designed to give a technical and governance component to pre prevent data from moving or leaving the secure setting in which it was originally designed to be. So one of the questions I get asked quite a lot is, what on earth is it you actually do, Phil? Um, and that this is kind of what I get to play around with. Um, it's really... Uh, the, the interplay between these things, we often refer to it as the science of the infrastructure. How do we make the infrastructure work? How do we do R&D activity on the infrastructure so that we can have data residing in a TRE, secure data environment, with the confidence of the five safe framework, but also making it completely fair and reusable? And in particular, how do we get this acceptable to NHS organizations? It's all very well us sitting uh, with my academic hat on and thinking that these wonderful systems should just be deployed. Um, but there's obviously complexity and quite rightly uh, governance constraints in terms of deploying certain software and tools into uh, the NHS systems. And so there's always this balance between uh, what's technically possible, but also what is actually acceptable to deploy into these environments. And of course, the bigger challenge in all of this space is just how fast data analytics and AI in particular is moving right now. If you go back a year, large language models probably wasn't something that people were aware of. It's now everywhere. But how do we make sure the infrastructure and the secure data environments and the TREs within the context of those frameworks can keep up with this really rapidly moving technology sector? And that's what uh, my role is really to, to try and understand how do we comply with the frameworks, uh, bring in innovation, but do it in a way that's acceptable uh, and trustworthy to the NHS and, and other parties that have uh, data they want to, uh, to share in a secure way. So federated analytics, uh, what is it? If you think about it in a very broad sense, it's simply the ability to run analytics across multiple environments such that the raw data stays within those environments and it's the analytics and the results that move. Federated analytics could be done completely in the open. Um, you, it doesn't necessarily have to be performed uh, between trusted research environments or secure data environments. And there are multiple federated systems out there that operate in that way where there's national repositories of open data. But in particular, what we're looking at is how do we run federated analytics uh, between secure or trusted research environments. Uh, the current team, uh, so Carol Goebel is our commander in chief. Uh, she kind of co-leads it with myself. Um, but then we've also got Simon Thompson based in Swansea from the SAIL and the UK SERP infrastructure. Stian from Manchester as well, who's done so much work on the federated, uh, sorry, on the RO crates, which I'll talk about in a second. We've got the Nottingham crew in terms of Tim, Jonathan and Graziella, but we've also got uh, representation from Dundee as well. Uh, we're currently recruiting four PhD students um, and we still got uh, one, one postdoc RSE post still to be allocated. We're still quite uh, early in our program and so we're just trying to understand what does the community need, uh, where are the gaps, uh, and we'll be looking to put a call out um, sometime next year, uh, heh, next year, this year, 2014, um, to understand how we would get somebody into posting that role once we know exactly what we need there. So. Um, I'll share that via Kev uh, for HDR Midlands, but also go out via the HDR channels as well once we move on that position. 
So within the context of what we're trying to do uh, for in, in terms of the HDR uh, program, uh, really what's important here is that we're focusing on the plumbing, on the middleware. We're not trying to do and create new ways of doing federated analytics. So we're not trying to develop the methods. There are plenty of people out there developing me uh, the methods around federated analytics. What we're trying to do is, is the plumbing, it's the infrastructure, it's the ability for somebody, a researcher, to send their analysis to the different environments, have it run in that environment, and have the results come back. But most importantly, doing that in a way that is consistent and completely compliant with the governance regulations in play at each one of those TREs. In particular, we're trying to reuse existing technologies, uh, reuse existing standards, so we're not trying to develop yet more platforms, standards and technologies, but try and reuse what's already out there. And in particular, we want this to be a developer or an analyst friendly kind of environment. So we take away the complexity of how you're going to run your analysis across these environments. We provide you one single endpoint and the infrastructure works out the best way to run that across the multiple TREs. In particular, we are making sure that this runs in different types of TREs, so some previous work, we're looking at how it can run in different cloud providers, but also in different on-prem technology stacks. Um, and this is really borrowing a lot of technology uh, from Elixir in that regard. Most importantly, I've referenced it a few times, uh, but we want to align with the governance frameworks. We don't want to revolutionize the world or change all the governance in order for this to work. We have to do this with alignment with those uh, activities. And federated analytics is great when you talk about it in a UK context. So um, how can we federate between Birmingham and Nottingham, for example? Um, but actually, I think federated analytics becomes much more interesting when we go global. How do we compare the analysis of what's happening in Nottingham or Birmingham or Derby with what's happening in Singapore or in Brisbane or you know in Malaysia? So how do we really tap into the data sets across the world by using federated technologies and that's what we're trying to do with this program is not do the analysis not do the methods development but provide the infrastructure layer that allows all these clever people that understand the federated analytics to deploy um, their tools across this network this builds on a lot of previous work um, so there's there previously some work uh, called atlas um, run it's in the first round of hdr funding um, which we undertook that was around the biobanks and samples and trying to understand how can you discover samples across multiple biobanks without just building one big central database there was a big program of work called co-connect uh, uh, in relation to the covid19 response um, so this is how we can enable people to discover uh, data about uh, ser serology results and antibody levels. Um, and most recently, this is part of the Dare UK driver program, uh, which was a short nine month sprint. Myself and Carol co led the TREFX, pronounced Terrifics project. Um, and there was another one uh, very similar from uh, Swansea and involved in Edinburgh called Teleport. So these are different ways of doing federation. Um, all the reports are now up on Zenodo uh, in terms of on the Dare, on the Dare UK Zenodo page if you want to find out more specifically about Terrifics uh, and also about the one called Teleport. So as I was mentioned, we are focusing on the plumbing and the way that we are wanting to do that is the first thing you have to worry about if you're going to do federated analytics is how do you do reproducible analytics? Because by federating, you're trying to get the same analysis to run in multiple environments where you don't control that environment, you can't tell everybody just to install and set up your platform, but how do you get your analysis to run in multiple environments? For that, we're using something called workflows. I'll come to that in a second. The second question is then how do you wrap that up and actually send it? And how do you move that analysis around multiple environments? And uh, that's something that we're using called RO crate, research object crate. And then there's all the infrastructure that you might need, and that's where the terrifics uh, project came in. Really importantly as well, within the, the context of the HDR UK program, there, there's multiple driver projects out there, uh, and we're working very closely uh, with Information and Immunity Driver program at the moment, because they've got an active desire to do federated analytics. Um, but also, we really want to make sure we connect into these regional communities. So it's great to be talking today as part of the Midlands, 
uh, but also there's a wider HDR regional community out there as well that we're tapping into where there's a real desire to see how federated analytics could work. So computational workflows, uh, if this isn't something that you've seen before, um, that you can you can check this out. Um, really what this is a, a, a way of doing is, is rather than you just having your code and you've maybe typed it in Python and you want it to run or SPSS start or whatever your kind of your choice is, there are formal ways of you representing the analysis that you want to do so that other people can reuse that analysis. So this doesn't actually have anything to do with federated analytics at all. Uh, it's something that you could undertake just for your own analysis without having to worry about federation. But it's a way of having a reproducible system so that you can describe uh, what the analysis is that you're trying to do and you could give somebody your workflow and they'll be able to rerun it. So that's um, the concept behind workflows. And then you've got some software down at the bottom here. Uh, I've never know how to pronounce it, but YFXS is that was my attempt. Um, this is again, Elixir technology. So this, this, this software, you can give it a workflow and it will run it. So there's both the descriptions of how do you describe a, a workflow and things like common workflow language, but then there's also software that allows you just to run somebody else's work, uh, workflow, such as YFX. Uh, if you want to know what workflows are already out there, this has come more from the bioinformatics space uh, historically. So if you want to look at it, there's something called Workflow Hub, uh, again, uh, Elixir uh, components. So you can go there and find out all the other workflows that people have published. In general, I would recommend uh, you all having a look if you've got analysis of actually publishing these, uh, because this is a way of actually getting outputs from your research. You might have the publication, but you can also publish your analysis pipelines and your workflows. So you can get them up there, people can see them, they can reuse them and they can get access to them. So again, this isn't just about federation at all. This is purely about how do we describe the analysis that we wanna do and how do we let other people know about the analysis that we want to do. So check out Workflow Hub as a place to find them. So RO Crate, uh, so I'm going through a whole, I'm not, I realize I can give you a whole load of detail here on, on different things, but I'm trying to give you a flavor of the different technologies that we're trying to bring in here. None of RO Crate, Workflow Hub, Workflows has nothing to do with us. We're just assembling these tools uh, to make them suitable for this program. So RO Crate stands for Research Object Crate. Um, this is a essentially a box uh, that you can put things in uh, from a technology level. It's really just a zip file where you can package a description about what you want to do. You can put your workflow in there. Um, and in some cases, you can actually even put your data in there. So I could, if the data was open and there was no governance constraints, I could send you, here's, here's the data I did the analysis on. Here's the metadata that describes this data and the analysis I want to do. And it also contains the workflow. So you can take that RO crate and you could just rerun my analysis utilizing the RO crate, utilizing things like the YFX. So this is really quite interesting technology about how, if we want to reproduce and ensure that we can have multiple people doing federated analytics across the country and across the world, we need tool sets like this that allow us to describe the analysis we want to do. It allows us to wrap it up in a common standard so we can send it to people. But then also, once we receive it, we need a mechanism to process it and run it and be sure that it can run regardless of the underlying infrastructure that it's running on. And that's why we've been looking at RO Crate workflows um, uh, to re-support the Federated Analytics program. So then trying to bring this into the context of TRE, Secure Data Environments and the Five Says framework, what we've developed, and this was uh, undertaken by Stian uh, from Manchester, was to create a five safes RO crate. Uh, so all this really is, is an RO crate uh, with some extra fields in there that says, um, this is a, a five safes RO crate. The technology is exactly the same as a standard RO crate, but it captures information that uh, is relevant to the five safes. So it captures the person that is trying to run it, but also things like the safe project as well. So if I receive this, crate from somebody and I'm a TRE, I can actually then double check. Is this a person we've said yes to? Uh, is this a project that we've said yes to? Is this something, is this analysis they're requesting something that I've seen as part of their project description? 
Um, so it allows me as a TRE to assess this as, is this something I'm happy to be run? So we've taken the, the standard RO create profile uh, and amended it to make sure the key governance information is also included as part of that packaging that moves around as we want to do federated analytics. So our architecture view uh, is that there's, there's three components that we need. It's what sits in the middle here. So we need somewhere where somebody can submit this crate. So we need a submission layer. So we need that place uh, to be more in the public domain. So not within a TRE, uh, but somewhere that a researcher could access directly. It needs to have some sort of identity provider. So if, if I say I'm Phil, it needs some sort of login to confirm that I am Phil. But that's where the crate can be initially submitted. Within the TRE, and within the secure data environment, we have what we call the TRE controller layer. What this does is it dials out, ask the submission layer if there's any packages that it should process. So is there an RO crate waiting for me to process? If there is, it pulls it down into the environment. At that stage, the TRE can then say and check against its own identity providers and, and project uh, uh, list of projects, for example, to say, is this a a project, is this a person, and is this an analysis that we have said yes to? If it is, it can then pass it down into the workflow executor layer, and that's where the data resides. So what we try to do is separate out the processing uh, and also the key governance steps. So we create an area which is more open where people can submit their jobs. It moves into a temporary area within the TRE for the TRE to confirm that this is something for them that they're happy to run. And if it is, it then can move down into the workflow executor layer where the data actually resides. So we try to really separate out those key components. And really importantly, uh, we, we're not bypassing any of the disclosure control checks. So before anything leaves the TRE back to the researcher, there's the option and the opportunity for the TRE to check everything that's been returned in terms of that architecture design. So. We completely comply with all the air gaps and all those types of things that are present currently within uh, the TREs and the SDE specifications. Just very quickly, in case you're interested, I don't know how many uh, techies are on the call. So these, these are the uh, technologies that we've been looking at as a, a kind of a longer list. Uh, the, the workflow languages that we support at the moment are the common workflow language and NextFlow. Nearly everything we're doing is also open source uh, on, on a, also a permissive open source license, so MIT. Um, and we're also working with uh, existing uh, suppliers of federated systems. So it's been great to be working historically and continually with BC platforms in terms of the work we've been doing there with the HDR cohort discovery tool and some of their federated tools. We've also been working with uh, federated learning companies. There's one called Bitfount uh, who have a federated learning platform. And we've also worked with uh, DataShield, which is more of an academic federated tool set. And what we've been able to demonstrate here is by utilizing open standards uh, and or open technology, both our implementations, but also commercial and academic other third party implementation can reuse that technology to be compliant and actually deploy this across our uh, infrastructures. So it's looking very credible. Um, we're still trying to test this all out at the moment in terms of is it definitely what we think uh, is the right way to go? And we're already having some early conversations internationally uh, around how this could work when we want to go uh, beyond just the UK. Uh, a few thank yous as well. So I mentioned Carol and Stian multiple times. So they are uh, definite, very strong collaborator collaborators in this area and bring so much of the Elixir understanding. Uh, important is the digital research service within the University of Nottingham, where a lot of the software engineering expertise comes from. BC platforms for all the work that we've done historically. Uh, we haven't landed in this position um, by accident. It's been a, a very strong collaboration with BC platforms over the last uh, six or seven years, I think. Uh, Emily Jefferson from Health Data Research UK, who's their chief technology officer, uh, and Esmond, who reminds me every day it's all about the standards. Um, and so summary, uh, I gave you a summary slide here of the QR codes. If you want to go and find out more information about some of the things that I've mentioned today. Uh, and also, if you're interested to find out more about the program as it develops, uh, there's a GISC mailing list 
um, and we're looking to create a community forum and have events and also have technology uh, dial-in sessions if people want to find out more. Uh, so that's something that Tim's working on. Um, so if you want to join that mailing list, uh, connect in there or, you, or, or via the QR code uh, and you'll get updates emailed out to you as and when they develop. But from the slide deck, that's it from me. So thank you very much.